Hello, my VOD people. Let's get this started. Just gonna post to Twitter. Let's just tweak that and we are go. Yeah. So yes, we are back within our app. So what I'm doing here is that I'm implementing the rules of I'm in implementing some uh, third party rules for um, duck fight combat in D D fifth edition. So I actually have a bit of an explainer on the front page here. So the rules are called aces high uh, and they are, as I said, for duck fighting. And they were originally published in uh, the D D magazine called Arcadia. Uh, published by MCDM, by Colville's um, uh, company, in their third issue, third month issue. It says approximately. I think it actually is stated now that it is, is monthly. Uh, you can get access to the rules by supporting their Patreon or just buying their the issue directly on their web store. So you need that for all the content, how the rules actually work, and some of the content related to how to use different kinds of flying vehicles or creatures or whatever. Uh, but so what I'm implementing here is you, this is the front page as of now. You head over here, you select the name. I'll just go with the default one. And then you start a scramble. So we start scrambling, get a good roll. Oh yeah, a 20, that's the current roll. That gives us a opening altitude of six. And the altitudes available are two through 12, because you're if you're at altitude one, you're basically crashing. So uh, we now have the scramble phase implemented. So when this is done, the ideally the other players will connect before scrambling. So you'll get a list of the players in the like the roster or that are connected at the moment, and you all start scrambling for five seconds. You roll until you get a desired, uh, or the be you, you bet on kind of the, getting the highest roll on your d20. And once you're done rolling, you stop and wait for the time to run out. And when it does, you get a, an opening altitude based on your roll. So as a dungeoneer extraordinaire, I got a six uh, as an opening altitude, which is the highest available result. So at this point, we're ready to start combat and we can click start combat, which will sh just show us this, which is basically the same thing. It's just another list with the uh, each player and their opening altitude. So I have an off-screen list to go to check. Uh, where are we? Altitude, yeah. Okay, so when it's your turn during combat, you've got two phases. You got the stun phase and the action phase. So we need to kind of support that at some point. And then we kind of just have to list what's available because there are stuff like gut moves which you can use at different points. But these gut moves, they are they are considered content. So I can't publish those. I've got like uh, stuff written down here uh, just to make sure that I remember because you have to spend, uh, you kind of build up dice and you have to spend dice to use the gut moves. So I have to remember what I'm what I need to support when it comes to spending dice. So I've written that down, but I can't publish I can't just put on put up the the full content because that's well, it's copyrighted, of course. And I don't want to get like a stern letter from MZDM saying, hey, hey, you're publishing our content. The rules should be fine. But uh, not not any of the content in the actual article. You have you'll have to buy the magazine for that. Anyway, so what we kind of need to track is 
the altitude of each player in the combat and whose turn it is and when it when is their turn we have to support the actions that you have to go through for that cert, for that turn right Okay, so first things first. Um, <laughs> what's that then? Uh, should we maybe? You should probably have some kind of height indicator. My initial thought was some kind of like, uh, like lines. And then, yeah, then we would show like small tokens to show where, how high up you are. Is that maybe, do we want to do that? It, it might get kind of noisy if we're supposed to have all 12, but might we, might we perhaps just say, show, show all, all the lower five levels and then just compact the upper tw uh, the upper six to only the ones with players that are actually there hmm that might work okay so we'll do that um let's just start with finding a token to use uh, so we'll get like a dragon token. And I think we can just search by do, 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 anytime all sizes, all types. Are there more over here? Yeah. All licenses. Here we go. Uh, free to share and use. Here we go. <laughs> That's a... That's quite funny. I might almost use that because of it, of how it looked. Uh, let's see what else we got. Well, that's a pretty generic dragon token. It's a bit more more what I had in mind, like what what I had in mind. Yeah, that's probably not. Mm. You know what? I'm just gonna use this. I'm guessing. Yeah, I think. Oh, it's from RuneScape, actually. Dragon token, OSRS. Uh, I don't know why I'm scrolling for more here. Should just use this token. I'm pretty happy with this. It's uh, it's transparent too, so that's fine. Okay, we'll just use this one. Uh, save in the chat. Um. Can just drag this over here, maybe, uh, into static. Did that work? No. That would have been good. Okay. Just uh, dragon dash token. Let's see, can I do this maybe? Don't know if you're, sh if you're seeing any of this on the stream, but uh, I'm trying to move a picture into my, okay, here we go. Yeah. So here's my dragon token, it showed up. Um, should I maybe, nah, I'll just, hmm. You know what, I'm actually gonna put it into its separate, own separate directory, just to make sure. Uh, so we'll just keep that in place. Holders makes it easy to find what we need to switch out before uh, before going live. Yeah, let's move that placeholders. There we go. Uh, yes, let's see. So this is the index page, which we are seeing here. So we're just uh, iterating through all the players right at the moment and printing their name and altitude. 
So what we want instead, I'm thinking, is like uh, maybe we should just keep like a like an array or something. I might just keep. We're not gonna make the most beautiful code at once. Uh, we're probably just gonna make everything work first and then kind of clean up and go through it and, and make it better afterwards when we actually can see what we're, what works as general uh, works as to be generalized and what what doesn't uh, <clears throat> so we'll just have like a um, what should we call it like board or uh, arena we'll just call it arena I guess and it's supposed to represent like the the place where everyone is battling I keep looking over at my own image but that doesn't work I need to look into the camera where you guys are uh, let's see uh, it's supposed to be a record and it's going to be a number to an array, to a player array, like so. Uh, and it starts out with two, and then empty array, and that's what it does. See here we go. Uh, here we go. Oh no no, we just need the twelve. There we go. So that's all the supported altitudes in order. So that's the first thing we do. And after doing that, we we go through all the players and assign them so four of const player not, not of arena of app state the players like so and for each player we insert them arena player dot altitude uh, dot push player yeah and inside of here delete these lines. I'm not going to iterate over the players anymore, but the objects dot keys of arena and we'll call that I don't know altitude I guess layer maybe nah so we're probably going to iterate in the order that they were added right yeah that makes sense so maybe we should reverse that uh, let's hmm let's add a function here actually get layers is that sure we'll call it that for now get layers which is object keys for air every ever for arena then we're gonna um, sort yes uh, on a and b where a no b minus a which will reverse it then we'll map 
and we'll say uh, for each key, give us the arena of key. We'll, we probably want both the key and the array, right? Yeah. So we'll say altitude is key and players is the value like so. And we need to add some parens around that like so. Yes. So we'll change this to be get layers. I guess we'll just change this layer uh, too to make it more obvious. So we'll just start by printing everything, I think. So do let's do like a uh, nah, we'll call it we'll call it an article, and we start by uh, using like a an H two maybe, and side of here we'll put the layer dot altitude, and this is. Mm, layer no no class layer altitude oh, that's a horrible uh, word no 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 script uh, style layer altitude and will display inline like so and then we'll just uh, class like layer to this and we'll say for the layer is supposed to be display flex um, Actually, we're using Picnic CSS, which does support a grid. So we'll just have a look at the grid, because we have actually quite a nice grid going, where I believe you can just say flex to make it expand the whole way. Um, let's see. I misremembered. Okay. We can split it off quite nicely, and it does support differentiating. So maybe now nah, we'll just use flex for now because that's what I want actually. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, display flex, we want a row, that's what we get by default, and we want the second item to actually flex, but we'll have to fix that next. Uh, let's do like a... Like a... Just use a div. Oop, that's not a div. <laughs> just use the div, and this is like the layer layers I guess layer players and this will flex a one to make it expand as we want it to and inside of here we're gonna actually do another for each, and another each which is layer dot players as player just close that up Ooh. Didn't want to do that automatically. And for 
for each of the players, we are going to have a div. I just have an image right away. Sure. That's going to be placeholders. Uh, dragon token the PNG. Uh, I don't know. Dragon. Oh, oh actually, we can actually make just make this uh, player dot name. That makes sense. And let's give this a class of. Layer to I'm not really sure why I'm namespacing everything with layer to uh, layer dash, but that's where we're at at the moment. So let's just continue the good times. Uh, let's set a height of like, I don't know, 50, oh, 40 pixels apparently. And the width to the same. Oh, that's not far uh, every time. Width, there we go. And uh, how do we set the hover thing again? Because we do get that from Picnic 2. So let's see. Uh, tooltip. To get a tooltip, set. Yeah, just set data dash tooltip. Actually, because that's when you get this one. But we do actually have balloon set. Right. Why did we use balloon again? I think we got some more options with balloon. Because that's what we're using. <laughs> uh, um, at the top let's see um, is it actually the compiler running yes it's running from yesterday which is good uh, let's have a look see at blue well actually we did put that in in the layout I think Yes. So I think we copy these two. And can I just put those directly on the image? I think I can. So we might just do that like so. And then we'll just put these like here maybe. And this is Supposed to be the player dot name uh, to the left. Uh, don't think we need this one. Do we need that one to? Um, I don't think we need the. Let's just change this to top. Uh, I. Th um, or is it above? That uh, we'll just leave it out and see if that works. Okay, uh, there we go. Let's compile that. Let's have a look in our thing. Import not found player. Uh, that's probably right because that's a type. So we probably need to import it as such. I know that Svelte can be quite finicky about that. So we'll just import type player from lib slash state. Did that solve it? No. Ah, here we go. Right. So we get layers. We did not get the player though, or at least the token. Is it missing altogether or is something not right with our thing? So let's do, do a little inspect here. Uh, I think we're supposed to be at altitude 6, if I remember correctly. So let's just inspect over here. Oh, this seems very empty. We should be putting it in here. In app state of dot players. We didn't get any errors. <clears throat> Let's see, app state dot players. 
in the arena of the altitude. We'll get that when we push the player. Hmm, might it be because we're not reassigning? Let's let's try that. Oh. Um yeah, player dot alti chewed and then push the player onto the end. That didn't look like it helped. Uh let's try again. No. No children. It's empty. Okay. Doesn't look like any players are added. Oh, actually, um, I actually need a quick bio break. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, be right back. Here we go. And we are back. Uh, so it still looks like we are not outputting the players where we expect them to be hmm interesting maybe we'll have to should we maybe derive this the arena from the players i think that actually makes a bit of sense doesn't it i think it does yeah let's Let's change it to do that. Uh, let's do a dollar sign and a call here. Uh, and we'll make the arena as such. All right. So what we'll do instead is, uh, <clears throat> we'll change this to be appState.players. Uh, 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 the players will do, do let's see, uh, let's do this for now. And reduce, and this is going to be the accumulator and the current value. We're going to do some stuff and then we're going to have the fault value, which is going to be this like so. So we'll start out with the empty object. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. <clears throat> and inside of here, we will. Yes, we will take the accumulator look up the altitude and we'll push to the returning array the current value then we'll return the accumulator like so well that did not work uh we don't actually need this anymore if we do this and uh, this should be fine i think yeah, this is probably fine. We're not getting any compiler errors. So we're probably getting some errors in here. Ooh, there we go. Can't convert undefined to object. Well, that's not very helpful. Error during init index. Right, so we can't compile index. That's logical. This is what we're looking at. Uh, can't convert undefined to object. Let's let's have a look. Um, <laughs> what's it actually complaining about? We're importing app state. It should understand what we're doing when we do dollar sign app state. 
could and absolutely does have a players. No, it does not. Okay, that explains it. Uh, <laughs> uh, doesn't it? Does it has ad player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it returns the actual app state, right? Which is set over here, which is a players array. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has players. So it does have players. So this is should be valid. Uh, do, 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 do. maybe we should just do like a simple console logo in, in here. We'll print out the accumulator for every step of the way. And uh, actually, let's clear this and refresh. Right, so this is undefined. Okay. Right. Maybe this should be just be derived too, actually. So instead of making this a function, th but this isn't a function though. That's that's the first problem. Wow, that's impressive. You see, this is a function. Uh, but do I actually use it like a function down here? Uh, where did it go? Uh, each no yeah, here we go. get layers okay yeah so i'm just using it as, uh, as a variable so we do this instead let's see what that okay that prints something so that's a good start so we're back to printing and it prints all the appropriate levels which is good <clears throat> but we're still not getting the I'm quite certain that we should be at altitude six with a player and we're not seeing anything at all. Um, in the console though, okay, we're not seeing the log statement. So it doesn't look like it's mapping anything. Maybe we've actually deleted the internal state. That might actually be the case. Okay, so let's start the encounter. We'll just do this, so scrambling. Uh, yeah. And we'll start the combat. Okay, there we go. We just deleted the state. That was, that was an easy fix. Does the state disappear when we do this? Oh, that's not optimal. Right. Why does it do that? Because it reinitializes every time we, we refresh. Um, because the store does not survive the uh, the refresh of the app. So we did actually solve some problems that we didn't have, but I actually like this better anyways. This is a lot better. This reacts properly to if players leave or come back or something too, which is good. And it, and it will handle updates also, so we can just reassign the players, and we'll actually, it, it'll just work, which is good. <clears throat> now, however, we have another problem. Um, I know kind of what we could do just to keep this state around for now. I'm kind of inclined just to, we'll just add it to local storage. Um, for now. Let's see, app state. Yeah, that's a writable. So, I believe this takes a second value, but I don't think it's what I want. No, it's just a start stop, not a notifier. That's not what I want. Uh, I want to, oh. Uh, uh, there was a pop-up pop on my screen. I actually want to subscribe to every time this the app state changes. Yeah. So 
I think I could just do that here. App state, subscribe, and I'll, uh, I'll get this. So I'll get like the, I don't know, new state. I'll just do local storage dot set item. Call it app state. We json.stringify the app, no, the new state, like so. And that's it. And when we load this, uh, actually, we don't go to local storage, we go to storage instead. And we need to do this thing before, so I'll just move that up a bit, like so. And when we're here, we'll do storage, get item, uh, app, state. And if that's not set, fall back to using the default object, right? Right. And it's probably complaining that we're not using. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, this is a string. So, poof. Um, Yeah, so we'll probably just store this in a server. Um, loaded app state. Um, so if loaded if we have a loaded app state, JSON dot parse loaded app state. And if we don't, return undefined, which will fall back to doing the other thing. Okay, this is a bit overcomplicated code, but sure, it works. So we'll start this whole thing over, like so. Start encounter. As a dungeon air extraordinaire, start scrambling. Oh, right. That's a good roll. We will start the combat. We're present. Excellent. And if we hover, we should be getting the name, but, we, but we're not. But if we refresh, we stay. Okay, that's good. Right, so let's go back to fixing what we actually wanted to fix, which is, first of all, the the hover thing. So we'll just look at balloon CSS, which is what we're using for pop-ups. It's a CSS only pop-up library, which is good. Uh, yeah, so that's up. Uh, so we have to use the data balloon pause to get that working. Data balloon pause up. Let's go back here. Okay, so it's not working on image. I'm guessing that actually, why are we getting a hover thing? That's interesting. That might actually be one of the caveats somewhere around here where it says we do not support these tags specifically because of, yeah, <laughs> uh, because they don't have uh, pseudo elements, uh, because they're self-closing elements. That's the one. Right. So I, that's why I kind of was wondering to wrap it in a div. For this exact reason, but I didn't couldn't remember if uh, image was one of them. But it is, so we'll just do this instead. No biggie. And if we hover now, okay, that's a, not exactly what I was expecting. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Well, actually, we don't actually need to flex this way. So we'll just do this. We'll remove, uh, let's see. We didn't actually need this wrapper either. <clears throat> we'll just do this instead. 
uh, and uh, do align content to center just to get that aligned a bit better. Wow, that did nothing. Uh, let's uh, have a look at the source code. Oh, that doesn't work anymore. Right. Oh, no, that's not what I want. Just a regular inspect. Right. So yeah, the layer should align its items horizontally uh, or vertically, but we're not. But now we're getting this. Yes. Maybe we should. Hmm. We might. Maybe we might want to switch the balloon library out for like a JavaScript one that can actually. Um, uh, take into account the the edges of the window or the viewport so that the labels don't fly off the screen. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. Um, it works. And if we need anything better, we can always move to something better later. The only thing is, though, I was kind of hoping that this would center better. Which it is not. Uh, might that be because the div is actually the full height? Does that make sense? Or rather, why is it doing that? Hmm. Why is it aligning itself this strangely? That doesn't make any sense. What does the uh, value say over here? Yeah, duh. Hmm. Because the image is small, that's not a problem. So we've got the article, which is full height. And then we've got the H2 that decides the size of the thing. That's fine. But then we got this dev, which is stretching. Should it be doing that? Maybe it should. Then there's this tiny image, which is just aligning itself inside of the div. So the div is doing something I'm not expecting it to. Maybe that's supposed to happen. <clears throat> Color, font size, line height. There aren't any like obvious reasons. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't be the balloon thing though. But we can test that by removing all that and see the result. No, it's apparently the same. Yeah, the div takes the whole height. I'm kind of surprised. I thought it would. Um, I thought it would shrink, to be honest. Uh, but the flex thing isn't working really either. Uh, this is the layout. Aren't there like, yeah. Okay, so we need the right element, which is none of these. We need this one, which has a flex thing going. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, pff, right. We're using the wrong man. Usually these don't, don't confuse me, but for some reason I actually managed to confuse myself this time. There we go. Easy as pie. Let's turn out the helpers. 
yeah, a bit of padding should get it working, but yeah, it's on layer layer six. That makes sense. Very clearly, it's on layers uh, on altitude six. Very easy to spot. So, yeah, let, let's just commit this. I'm a uh, fan of small commits. So, we'll just add this in. Uh, display each player uh, at the correct altitude. Also adds placeholder token. Let's see, displays each player in a two to two through 12 altitude grid, in quotes. Uh, adds a placeholder token, adds uh, persistence, uh, player state persistence. We go. Uh, let's see. So maybe the next thing should be we should be able to change the altitude. For now, I think we're just gonna maybe if you click it, you can select a new altitude just to be able to test this. We I'm I'm thinking we might we have to give it some more options later, but that's what we're gonna do for now. So we're just going to add an on click for this, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's just round up the on click. So uh, change, change altitude, I guess. Yeah. And it's, hmm, should probably take the player. But I'm thinking. Yeah, we'll just take the player for now and we'll figure this out as we go along. So we're back to importing the player because we removed that code. So import type player from lib state, like so. And to change the altitude, we take the player uh, yeah, and we pop a, what are they called? Prompts. Prompt message. Um, should we, yeah, we should do this properly. Grr. Uh, let's see, yep, this one. Uh, yep, so we do this, we do play and uh, what's the strings this is the scramble part so play uh, let's uh, I don't know combat maybe combat uh, change altitude All right, we actually need a key for this. <laughs> uh, let's see, change altitude. Probably gonna get pretty good at writing altitude. I had some problems in the beginning. My fingers just wouldn't do the right thing, but uh, now it's coming along quite nicely. Come out, change altitude. There we go, we're gonna prompt for this. We're gonna get a response, new altitude. We are going to update the player. So we're going to say player. Hmm, I bet that we could probably just set the altitude directly. New altitude. As altitude. There we go. 
And this goes back to, we can't have this, so we need to do this. And we need to add the click handler over here. So if you click this on click, we are going to change altitude. Actually, we need to do that like so. And with the player as an input. I'm going to save that. I'm going to click this. New altitude is going to be 12. Yeah, it doesn't update. If we refresh though, okay, we stay at the same place. So quite clearly, we need to push that back into the <coughs> app state to be able to change that reliably. So we'll just head back to state. Oops, that's the wrong window. Here we go. We need to head back to state. And where we previously just had add player, we're gonna add another one called update player, I guess. Update player. How do we want to do this? There are multiple possibilities. There are like where we just pass in the new player, but then we have to kind of find the original player in some way. That's not too easy. Because then we kind of need the old object too. Maybe and the, another way would to pass in the updated object and replace it, and we could match on an ID. And the third option is you pass in an ID and a callback. So you use the ID to find the right player, then you pass the player to, to the callback, and the callback updates the player. That seems, that seems a bit convoluted, I think. It's a lot easier just to update the player directly with an ID. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So update player. Just pass in the player, which is our type of player. And uh, let's see. Like so. We're going to add a comma here. And we'll head up to player. We'll add like an ID, which is a. I'll just store as a string. That's the easiest. That's the easiest. And in add player, the ID will be something generated, like so. That's easy. And then in update player, we'll have a look through. Uh, how do we do this? App state update. We'll get the current state. will go through the players. We'll find the one where player ID matches the player ID. Then we'll we'll be able to well maybe we can just do this <laughs> right because we want to replace it basically with the new one yeah I know what I'm gonna do it's what I want to do all along I want to do this immutably so players is gonna be a new thing so players is gonna be current up players. But we're going to map over everything everything for each player. If p.id is not equal to player.id, just return p. If not, return player. So this will iterate through all the players. Oh, players. And if the current 
player in the iteration is not the player to be updated. Just return it as is. And if it's the one to be updated, return that instead. So that means it will go through the whole array. And if it finds a match, it will swap out the match uh, and return a new array, which is updated. So we'll just return current at the updated thing. Then we can go back here. We can say that when we want to change the altitude, we get a new altitude, we got the player. Then we just do app state, update player, update player. We pass in the player like so, and it get handled automatically, hopefully. So we're at 12, okay. Yeah, that did not work. <laughs> uh, why did it not work? I feel like it should work. It does kind of the same thing that this, um, other thing does, which is use uh, update, current players, push. It swaps out the, uh, the array though. Might that be problematic? Should we use a slice instead? Not a slice, but a splice. Maybe that's better. We do change the altitude though, don't we? Get the player, we prompt for a new altitude. Well, this is some kind of text on the string, I'm guessing, yeah. So we should probably parse, this is an int. There we go. Oh, right. Okay, so it was updated. Uh, let's get back to six. Oh, so it is updated, but it's not pushed to our... Right, okay, that's interesting. So we are updating it. It's being stored and saved and everything. So that means this works, and that actually also means that this, that is actually pushing the update, because otherwise we wouldn't save it. So that's nice to know. That's actually quite nice to know indeed. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna take care of pop-up. Here we go. It's getting annoying. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Why is it not updating? I'm wondering. Is it this that's not updating? Oh, it's this. Of course, because this is a, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a function, so I'm only loading that once. Uh, but it's depending on arena, though. But it's not in, yeah, 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 yeah. It's this one, it's this one. Of course it is because it's not interactive. So if you rather do this and we change this from get layers to just like call it, calling it layers, I guess. I, I kind of don't like that name, but that's where we are. Now it'll work properly. So we change this to just be layers like so. Uh, probably we should make this work properly first. What have we done wrong? Layers is not defined. Yes, that is correct, because we didn't name it layers over here. Here we go. Okay, so let's click this, set this to 12. Right, that didn't work. Oh, it didn't work at all. Let's try that again. 12? No. Okay, but it's generating an, an error in the console. 12? Okay. Update player is not a function. Well, that's helpful. And it's also correct because we're not supposed to subscribe when we do update player. Where do we have the player? Here we go. Just supposed to do directly on the app state. There we go. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, yeah. 
Yay, it's working. Let's see, nine. Yeah, excellent. Uh, are we able to make this? So could we, for example, say, oh, I don't think we're gonna, gonna... The, the awesome thing would be if we were able to like animate it between the two positions, but I don't think we're able to, not the way we've constructed it now. I don't think we, because we will be able to, um, I have to think about this for a while. Uh, no, I think we might if we say like player.id in parens and then immediately on this one we say animate and then do like flip, but we have to import flip. So we'll just say import flip from Svelte Animate. Does that work? Would be kind of awesome if it was this easy. Oh man, it was worth a try. I didn't think it was gonna work. I am. Um, there are, are some criteria you need to match to make this work automatically. But the fact that it's working interactively like this, it's it's awesome. I don't remember what's the criteria for flip to make flip work. You need to have an. I have an ID to ID it by, but I think you have to. Ah, oh, there's something you need to do. Let's just have a quick look, actually. Uh, just at Svelte Dev. We'll have a look at the API. <clears throat> and we are able to have a look at animate function. Yes, yes, yes. But we actually want to know about. Uh, flip. Yes. First, last, and we're play. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because it's able to move them as long as they're all in the same loop. But I think the problem we're having is that we're looping twice and it's not really recognizing what the hell we're doing. Uh, I think that's the problem. So I'm not too surprised that it didn't work, honestly. Uh, but I think I think the problem is that we're looping twice, so it's can't keep track of where we actually are. Does it work if we add like a no? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That just complicates things. Um, yeah, but I'm quite happy with it. Just jumping between the layers as is. I mean. This is so cool. Very minimal code to make this work, I think. It could be a lot nicer though, but that's not what we're here for at the moment. Okay, so we'll just uh, I'll just commit this in the off-screen window, which you can see. Uh, let's see, add support for changing altitude. Adds temporary uh, feature to change altitude by using prompt. So it's not the most elegant solution, of course, but it works and it makes lets us test that we're actually rendering th stuff correctly. And the next thing I want to actually implement is just the compact version of this um, where where we actually don't render anything if there isn't anything to render, right? So when we've got a layer, uh, if, so if the layer, that altitude is less than seven or Uh, layer the players have a length that's worth no uh, noting. So this will be zero if there are no players, which evaluates to false. And if it has a number other than zero, 
because it has items, it evaluates to true. So if it's less than seven, or you have players rendering, which will show the lower five levels and just compact the top ones so you don't have to think about them. I think that's, we're probably going to add some kind of <clears throat> uh, some kind of uh, indicator that like, yeah, we're, there are some hidden layers here, but you're not going to see them. So we, we could quite easily add that actually just be doing like an else and we'll just do like an H HR here, right? So you're able to see that there are some stuff between here. Uh, so if we click here and say, yeah, yeah, we're actually on nine now. We can see that yeah, there's more stuff above you and more stuff below you, but that's not relevant for us right now. Yeah, it actually works quite well. Quite well. Yeah, let's quit this too. Um, uh, minimize empty altitudes. Renders, uh, renders uh, HRs instead. Oh, that's not how I write instead. Instead of uh, a full layer when there are no players at that altitude, altitude. When the altitude, oh, this, this is not a good sentence, but it'll have to do. Altitude is above six. Yeah, that's proof. Not happy with how that turned out, but yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> that's actually quite informative, I think. Yeah, I'm surprised how well these lines actually just worked. <laughs> um, I think it quite it quite compactly illustrates that there are more happening. So even if you, you move down like to level four, you'll still get these lines up here telling you it, there's more above, there's more at high altitudes, but you don't, you don't, they're, they're, they are irrelevant at the moment, which is, which is how the rule gauges them too. Uh, I think we need some kind of status, uh, like window that shows you here are the, stuff you need to think about when you're up here uh, or when you're at this altitude. So for example, if you're at high altitudes, you get certain um, drawbacks. Uh, I don't remember them quite, quite at the moment, but you get certain drawbacks at high altitudes, but you also get some benefits. So you should, I should, you should, you should list both of those, I think, to remind you that, yeah, you, you, you are navigating on high altitudes, you have some disadvantages, but you're actually getting some advantages too. And the same goes for when you're, uh, when you're on whatever level, you have certain advantages if you're above someone or you have certain disadvantages if you're below someone and you should always uh, be informed of those, I think. Because that's half the problem with playing like uh, TTRPGs in general, that there are a lot of statuses and conditions that always apply, and remembering it, all of them is probably the most difficult part. But just having like a reminder that says, yeah, remember this thing, and I'm not sure how much I want to write about each thing, but it might just be easier to say, remember, you have, you, you've you got the disadvantage on attacks at the moment, that, and that's probably enough. And if not, just mention something like with like a keyword to remind them, oh yeah, I need to look that up in the rules to actually apply the right thing in Majig to make this, um, <clears throat> uh, to make this uh, roll correctly. Right, so we got the altitudes working. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, okay, so I got probably 20 minutes left if even that. Um, So the next step might be to implement like the conditions, but that's going to be like a whole rule thing where we, uh, you kind of 
you have to pass in all the players and which player am I? And according to the rules and in relation to the other players and what altitude I'm at, what kind of statuses, conditions, advantages and disadvantages do I have? And what other stuff do I need to remember when I'm at this point? And this is not even even considering that we're you're both in a stunt phase and a and there's an action phase to your turn. So in the stunt phase, you roll some dice. You see how well you're able to position yourself in relation to the other characters or creatures in the combat. And the action phase is you actually doing like a proper turn where you're doing melee attacks or spell attacks and you're using the dice you just rolled or dice you've accumulated from previous rounds and spend them to do cool stuff. Which is probably the coolest thing about this thing is that it, it allows you to do cool stuff when you're in the air. Uh, more than just like flying directly above the battlefield. This is like dogfights. You're swirling and navigating and dodging in the air. But quite high up, but not too high up. You're in other high altitudes. That's also modeled here, but yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's quite cool uh, what you're able to do with these rules. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the next thing I'm, I'm imagining that I'm going to cover is actually the rules thing. Where you... Hmm, do I, though? It doesn't really make sense unless there are other players to kind of experiment with. And at the moment, I don't have support for that. So maybe I should just auto-generate some players. Uh, yeah, I give them some tokens. Maybe that's an idea. Maybe I should do that. Yeah. I might actually just auto-generate some players. That, that makes it easier to work with in the long run. Right. So in the scramble phase, at some point we set up, we add like the uh, the player. Where do we do that? Uh, do, 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 do. Over here, yeah. This is do, doing quite a, quite a bit of stuff at this moment. Uh, let's see. We change the state. We clear the inner wall, interval. Uh, let's do this. And I think we're just going to auto-generate like a few players. What we actually need to do is give... Uh, okay, so we're just going to copy this. And instead of using the player name... We're just going to use, like, uh, we got Bill, and Bill is getting in, uh, we're doing burp, burp, burp. current roll, but we're just going to roll dice, and we're going to roll, oh. uh, no, not roll die, um, what's it called again, generate dice roll, that's a long way, roll a d20. And then we got Amy, and yep, and last but not least, Rory. So they are all going to play with us, doing some dog fighting. Um, so if we now go through the setup stage, start an encounter, we're going to be the dungeon air extraordinaire. We're going to start scrambling, we're going to get a... Ah, there we go. A good roll. And we're at it twice. Ooh. That's not intentional. Oh, yeah, because that's... <laughs> right. We actually need to clear the players first. In case we have any old state laying around. So... Clear, clear players, reset I think, should probably be the last thing we do, reset, so when we reset what we do at the moment is that we just, uh, we just do app state, let's see, app state, dot 
update. The current one, let's have that. And we're gonna do the current dot players dot clear. Is that a thing? Empty? Nah. <laughs> Equals an empty array. <laughs> Return current. That's what a reset does. And that's what we do here. Upstate dot upstate dot reset. Yeah. So we now start back all the way at the beginning. We start the encounter. We are at Dungeon Eric's Nair. We start whirling. There we go. Yeah. This is good. We start the combat. And we're all in. Excellent. Right. Um So let's see. We should probably have some different tokens for everyone. So we're going to do going to rename this to Dungeoneer, Dun, Dungeoneer, Extra, or, let's just call DM. <laughs> <coughs> In uppercase. Yeah. And can I just do like a, hmm. I was kind of debating if, if I'm just gonna do color, some kind of color filtering. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna even be able to see this when I do this. Uh, no, no, no. It's gonna, let's see. So you're not gonna be able to see this. Uh, so this is not very interesting for you guys. Uh, but we're gonna try just doing some simple, simple color filtering on this image. Uh, does this work? Yeah. Okay, so I'm pulling it in into, oh, that's not a good idea. And just into like a like an image editing program. Uh, how large is this? Let's see, reveal in Finder or something of the kind. I have to do in the full directory, maybe. Find the files. Oh, nope. Uh, really? Ah, uh, open in Finder, I guess. How big is this image? Six sixteen. Okay, that's a strange resolution, but sure. Uh, let's uh, go back. Let's change the canvas size to like seven hundred, I guess. By seven hundred. Pull this in like so. So again, this is very interesting for you guys, because for you people, because you will not be able to see anything that's happening. Um, am I able to do something easy here? I'm not really an editor of any expertise. Yeah, so we'll just go with this. <laughs> Looks horrible, but sure, this is what we're going for. So let's see, export to PNG, sure, whatever. Uh, we're gonna, just gonna put this in a folder and we're gonna call this Amy, because that is her name. 
And then we're going to do another shape for someone else. So someone's going to get a triangle. We'll just do a eagle sided triangle. These are, I don't know about this color. Just to top it off, I'm, I'm a bit colorblind too. So the colors look fine to me, but it might look horrible to you. But that is not my problem. And then last, but certainly not least, we're going to make Rory's ooh, custom shape. That's interesting. Let's do the one that was pictured. So I'm going to do a bit large one, which isn't quite fitting. Using a heart for Rory. You'll see in a minute. Because um, he was always full of love. Even to a certain foolish degree. Anyway. Uh, that's not what I'm going to do at all, but here we go. These turned out pretty bad, but um, <laughs> they'll do. <laughs> well, all uh, you visual, uh, or rather artists out there, no need to fear, I'm not going to be any competition anytime soon. Which wasn't really something to be worried about at all, but there you go. I just managed to confirm it quite, quite well. Okay, so I've added three pictures of Amy, to or tokens rather, for Amy, Belle, and Rory. And my thought is that in the roster here, we can change this, oops, change this to this, and this to this and we change this to player dot name yeah did that work out right yeah I think so yeah that did actually work wow that is quite good uh, the images are less clear than I thought they would be which is bad, but we'll make do. The only problem is I need to change my my DM name. D -d -d DM. Ooh, M. Start scrambling. I'll just stay for five then. Wow. Right. Oh, we could just hover too. Oh, that's very pretty practical at the moment. <laughs> they were able to hover to see who they are. Okay, so now we got the simulated players playing along with us, and we're able to change their altitude. Oh, we're not. <laughs> we're not at all. In the accumulator, current altitude is undefined. Okay, that seems unlikely, but sure. So is the altitude an invalid? Oh, right. 13 is invalid. <laughs> wow. Very good work. Okay, let's do 9 instead. Should That should... Okay, let's just refresh this. Oh, I think we might have just ruined something. Okay. Let's start over. Okay, here we go. Start encounter. We have to be named DM now to make the tokens work. Uh, we will take the six as the opening altitude. We start combat. Okay. Now, Rory is going to move to layer two, which he does. And the DM is going to move up to ten, which he does. Yeah. Great. Okay. So this is working. This is working quite nicely. Uh, we should probably, <laughs> uh, we should probably add some checks here, but this is not going to be the way that we're going to change altitude anyways. So it's not going to be such a problem. We might just add like a, a change altitude thing on the app state instead. Uh, just to have the proper checks and everything when we're changing altitude, because we might do that from difficult, uh, from multiple places at once. So that's the thing. Um... 
Ja. Uh, so we're gonna add this to a commit just to make sure. Du, 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 du. Uh, auto uh, generate some players when starting command. Generates three other players to uh, simplify testing with multiple players in the command. Like so. We might actually keep that around uh, just for testing purposes, right? So if it sees a, oh yeah, you're joining with no other players, let, let's just auto-generate a few players for you so that you're able to play with someone. That would, would be actually be kind of cool. Okay, so that's that. I think we're gonna end it there. Uh, it's five to 12 o'clock at night, midnight for me, and I have to work tomorrow. And I think I've been streaming for like half, one and a half hours. Yeah, a bit over an hour and a half. So that should probably be enough for now. So yeah. If you're watching this on the playback, thank you for um, sticking on, uh, all the way through. So uh, have a good one, and I hope to see you next time. Stay